After almost two years in the shop, this thing is finally alive again for the second time. Let's get started. So many of you guys have been following along on my channel for the last two years, have seen videos about this Jeep and the catastrophe that ensued from the engine and it failed catastrophically. We've got it all back together. It's obviously running and driving again and it runs like a top. It runs perfectly. We're going to talk about what it took to get to this level, to get it running and driving the way it's supposed to, and some of the pitfalls, some of the things that we've been through with this car. It has been a long, long journey. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. So here's the front of this 1983 Jeep Wagoneer, a Grand Wagoneer, I believe, and it has a big layer of filth on top. It's kind of dusty from being in the shop for so long. It's kind of be expected when anything sits that long, it's gonna get some dust on it. It just needs to be washed off. We'll, we'll take care of that when we get ready to deliver it. But we have changed out the wheels. Those are some newer wheels that the customer brought by to put on. So many of these are rusted out, whether it be the Wagoneer, the Grand Wagoneer, whatever, they are just completely rotted through on the body. But this one is not. We've gone through and fixed a lot of wiring and things, issues with the lights, that's all been fixed. There's a motor inside of there and the tailgate that we fixed, it got that all going and the defroster and everything. As we come down this side here, it is also in very good shape. I'm not sure what the customer paid for it, but they bought a running and driving Wagoneer. They just wanted to do some serious upgrades and change some things around on it. So they brought us a running and driving Jeep. How did it get to this point? The customer wanted us to pull the engine. The customer took the engine to his own builder and had some changes or some things done to it, upgrades. And then we're going to install fuel injection on this engine that had been built somewhere else. They did a dyno run with the engine. I don't even think they broke it in properly. They just ran it hard on the dyno. And it's also the issue in the video we talked about many videos ago with cam lifter problems here in America with them not being hardened properly on the bottom of the lifters. Let's take a look under the hood. This is the AMC 360 engine, and Danielson has been doing the work on this, and it looks very tidy and very neat under the engine bay. You almost can't tell the fact that it's fuel injection, but it does have the Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 system. Here's the sump that runs the fuel injection high, high pressure side, comparatively high to a carburetor. And everything is done, the wiring is done. The engine is currently in its 500 mile break-in period. We'll go for a little cruise here in a little bit, but it's running so nice. Let me start it up for you guys. The first rebuild catastrophically failed. I don't know if they didn't break it in properly or what, but the lifters that were used were not hardened on the bottom. The cam lobes failed, the lifters failed, and finally it actually cracked and broke some of the webbing between the lifters. It actually broke the block. Luckily there was an old Jeep out back that Crazy D had purchased at an auction and had the identical engine and everything in it. We were able to pull the motor, pull it all back apart, and used the block off of the rat jeep is what we called it because it was a jeep that had a rat infestation really bad. But we got it all stripped down and this time we took it to my builder, Martin Machine in Wichita. He went through and got everything machined back up. But we used old lifters and cam from the 1980s. They're new, but they're old stock, new old stock. You could visibly see on the bottom of the lifters, they were brown, they were hardened. A brand new set is not. 
So you can't tell me there's not a difference there. There's a huge difference. Why they don't harden them now, I don't know. I don't know what, what's going on with that. But now that we've got the hardened lifters, a 1980s camshaft to the proper specs that the customer wanted, it runs great. Everything's doing just like it should. We did the proper procedure on the first start and did cam break in. I don't know why that wasn't followed before. It's been kind of a nightmare as far as getting this thing back on the road. In addition to fuel injection, there was other things done as well. Let's take a look. It's got an aftermarket electronic fuel injection style distributor. It's all electronic. It doesn't use the DuraSpark Motorcraft module anymore. It uses the ECM. This looks like the old Motorcraft DuraSpark ignition module, and it is but we hollowed it out where there's nothing left inside but a shell and we fit the Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 ECM inside of it. So it looks stock, it looks like it's an authentic ignition module, but it's running the entire engine, not just the distributor. That turned out very well. The cruise control is stock and it is working just fine. It's got a new booster, master cylinder, all that's been flushed and gone through, new wiper motor. There's all kinds of new parts on here that the customer provided. Just wanted them replaced just because he wanted them replaced. It's got a new heater core, new blower motor, all kinds of brand new parts on this thing. Everything's working very well. The AC works, the heat works, and I'm so happy that the engine works. It works very well. It makes sense to do all those repairs while the engine was out because Danielson could literally fit in the engine bay where the engine was and just go through and do everything and it went very quickly. But everything's back in and it's running so well. Let's go for a quick drive. So finally we get to actually go drive this Jeep and it's not broken, the engine's not failing and doing weird stuff. It runs like it should. Let's go for a cruise. Obviously we're not going to romp on it or do anything crazy because it's still in its break-in period. But we'll just take a little cruise down the road here. It does need an alignment. It still needs that. That needs to be done soon. And all the gauges are working. Like I said, the cruise control works. Heat, AC, all work. The interior has had some work done to it. Some of the seats have been redone. The headliner has been redone. Lots of little trim pieces and things that customers provided. It's just so cool to have it back alive again. I'm so happy about it. We still have a few things to check here or there. We have verified the four-wheel drive is working. The brakes are working very well. All the lights, as far as park lamps and everything, are working very well. The radio works, the clock works. It actually rides pretty decent for a 1980s Jeep. These never did ride like a Cadillac, and they weren't meant to, but they actually ride very nice. So here we are with Daniel. We have the little tablet that comes with the Edelbrock fuel injection system. Actually shows all the parameters and everything. We'll go ahead and start it, Daniel, and we'll show them what it looks like. So here's the little tablet that comes with the Edelbrock fuel injection system. It allows you to see all the parameters, all the data, 
once you get everything hooked up, you can see where you're running at. And you can use it to dial the thing in. You see our fuel pressure is at 42 PSI, 750 RPM, and that's exactly what it's asking for. 14 volts on the battery. All your data, everything is here to use to see if it's running correctly. The engine is actually kind of cold right now, still warming up. Our air fuel ratio hasn't started reading yet, but it is set for 13.8. So it's not just easy to just plug everything in and go drive it, huh? No. It, 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 takes, it takes a little bit of fine tuning and stuff like that, which we're not really going to do. Yeah. We got everything running right. Everything is running good as far as the engine, the core of the engine. It's doing very well. We will be taking this to a tuner in Wichita, who's also going to be tuning to 308 Ferrari for us and have him look everything over, make sure everything looks right. It is a self-learning system, but we'd like to have a second set of eyes verify everything looks perfect. But the, they sell these online, and it's kind of like the idea you can just bolt it on and go drive your car. It's not that easy. Yeah. It's, they're supposed to be like you drive it, and it kind of self-learns. I don't, I don't think they're very precise. You know, I think a, a tuner might be able to, to, you know, tell us more than what the system, you know, that tablet can tell us. Right. It's really. kind of a generic tune, and it gets it running. But if you want to get it perfect, you really need to have a tuner look at it. But it's been a lot of work under the, under the hood here and a lot of wiring. There's a lot of wiring we had to add that wasn't here before because it was a carbureted engine. So power supplies, grounds, relays, all these things. You don't think about that when you order a system like this. You think you just bolt on and run some fuel lines and you're done. And I've seen lots of people buy a system like this and then the next thing you know it's on Marketplace. They give up. They're like... I don't even know, this is a lot more than I thought it would be. I am done with the project, I quit. So make sure to keep that in mind if you're looking at something like this. Anyways, you've done very good, it looks very nice, and it's alive again, I'm very, very pleased about that. So it's been a long time coming to get this thing finally done, and no, the water on the ground is not from this vehicle, it's from something else, it's not from this Jeep. This has been a very tough project because of all the breakage of things failing that we had to redo and take it back out. So how much does this guy have into all this? Three or four grand? Ten? More. More. It's going to be more than ten. I don't even know. There's been so much. I'm going to have to sit down and tally everything up. We had to pull the motor twice. The first failure of the engine was not our doing, so we don't offer a warranty on that. We didn't break it. So he had to pay us a second time to pull the engine. He will have to decipher that with the person that built the engine as far as reimbursement, but that's going to be paid for here. The one good thing about this whole scenario is that the customer is a very nice person to deal with, and they've been fully understanding. He even told me, he says, I know I have to pay you a second time to pull the engine. He said, what do you need, some money up front? He said, go for it, do it. I understand. I totally get it. I really love to deal with customers like that. I'll go out of my way and do a lot of extra things for someone who's understanding because it makes it easier for the mechanic and the customer to get to the goal, whatever the goal might be. If you're fighting and bickering the whole way to get to the goal, sometimes you don't even get to the goal. You can't come to an agreement. We also are getting close on to 308. We have an appointment with Polk Performance in Wichita is going to tune that first, and once that's done, then we'll get the Jeep down there and get that one tuned, everything taken care of. Then we might be able to have some time to jump onto the Jag L and get the V12 Jag engine running in that thing, get it off the lift and onto the ground, get some more videos for you guys. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for that one, but I've been waiting for a long time for this one to be done. And also the Ferrari, my Ferrari. Sure. My 308. You have a Maserati. You have a fake Corvette. It's a real one. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. I know you're really good at framing the Jagel in the background, Mrs. Wizard. I try hard. Yep. I know everyone wants it off the lift, and I do too. I want to get that thing running as well. We've gone through the interior, the wiring, suspension, brakes, all kinds of things, and it's finally culminated to a day when it's running and driving again. We got some final tuning. We got to go through with a fine tooth comb front to back and really shake this thing down. And that's the biggest thing whenever a project that's this large 
is done, you don't just hand it over to the customer and hand them the keys and say, here you go. We ourselves need to put a couple of hundred miles on this thing. If something's going to act up, if there's something that needs a little bit more work or needs addressed, we need to know that now and solve it now. Because the bill this customer is going to have is very large. It needs to be right when they pay the bill, not afterwards. It's also why this is one of the last of these that I will ever do. We're also going to be finishing up the Nova. Now that we can be done with this, we can jump on the Nova and get that one knocked out. I will not be doing this type of work ever again. I will never do this again. And that may be upsetting to some people. Or maybe it's like, why? You could make money. But I won't. Like I've mentioned in the past, these types of jobs, especially older vehicles and these types of jobs, I probably will break even. That's it. So you look back at all this time invested and it's like, was it worth it as far as for the shops in? No, totally not. So I keep that in my mind when someone says, hey, I got a 68 Camaro, I'd like you to restore, I'd like you to go through it. And that comes back to my mind. Is it worth it? No, it's not. The only way it is worth it is some of the shops on the coast that will charge you accordingly to do such a big endeavor. You're going to pay 50 or 80 grand or possibly 100 to get that thing where you want it. That's not what we do here. So I'm glad we're at the end of the line with this Jeep and we'll get it back to the customer as soon as we get everything dialed in just right. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this or any of these cars in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. And also in the link, there's some links to these videos so you can go and watch what all happened with this Jeep. Make sure to also hit the subscribe button because we have sweet bus videos coming. Thanks for watching.